Hi, I'm Atrai Roy, a GMAT strategy expert here at EGMAT. And in this video, I'm going to do an account walkthrough for one of our ex-students, Agniva, who went on to scoring a GMAT 730 from an initial score of 640, improving his verbal score from a V30 to a V40 and his quant from a Q48 to a Q49. So let's understand how did he do it. Now, like any other student, the first step is to diagnose what are the problems, right? So, Agniva did the same for him, um, himself, and, and he found out that there are essentially three problems. Um, in verbal, he was really struggling with CRNRC question. In quant, number properties was the bigger problem. In critical reasoning, he was not able to solve inference and assumption type questions. In reading comprehension, his retention was a problem. He was also taking a lot of time uh, for solving long passages which were on, on unfamiliar topics. Number properties gave him a real hard time because, uh, you know, he found that the concepts are really a bit more tougher and then uh, it, it's, it's uh, you know, applying those concepts became really hard for him, right? Once he understood his problems, the next step was patching them up. So what did, we, uh, what did he do? If you look at his critical reasoning course attempt, you would find out that his inference course and assumption course are fantastic. Not only that, it clearly shows you that it's taken more than the recommended amount of time, which is, you know, in that direction, an intent in that direction, which clearly tells you that he was really into, uh, into the mindset that he needs to tackle the weaker areas to make sure he does not falter at them at a later on stage. And that is something he did over here. Both in inference and assumption, as you can see, the practice quiz course are fantastic. Not only that, uh, once CR was patched up, the next part was reading comprehension. Now, reading comprehension gave him a tough time because he was not able to retain information and he was taking long, um, you know, uh, longer amount of uh, time to solve uh, lengthier passages and uh, which were on uh, you know difficult topics so essentially the problems were you know into understanding the sentences understanding the meanings of sentences that you had in the reading comprehension passage and for that reason he did the master comprehension module the master comprehension module helps you understand and comprehend sentences in a much better context you know if you go through it uh, once and mind you if you did all the course uh, you, you would see that part of the course is not done primarily because um, it was not available to him when he was doing the course uh, you know in, in, in his time uh, once the master comprehension module was done and as you can see over here fantastic scores right he then moved on to into reading comprehension in reading comprehension you know you see that his practice quiz scores are at a 96 percentage, which is so very high. And if a student who's struggling in reading comprehension gets to these uh, scores, um, you can predict what would be his scholaranium um, accuracies. Now, when I go to his scholaranium, what you find out over here is uh, his medium accuracies are greater than the threshold value. Not only that, he's really scoring in that 98 percentage for sentence correction, um, 83 for critical reasoning. Mind you, he was struggling with critical reasoning. So it's really patched up all those gaps. And that's quite evident in the medium accuracies that you have over here. Not only that, when you look at his hard, uh, you know, accuracies, he is at uh, a 60 percentage at SC. And when you look at his uh, CR and RC attempts, you would find out that um, you know his accuracies are more than SC, which which was initially his, his, his strongest uh, strongest point, I should say, right? So this tells you the importance of doing stages one, two, and three um, correctly, because when you do so, it it gives you a lot of confidence, and and you can see uh, that translating into real numbers that would um, definitely help you to score better. So this was the verbal part. What happened around quant? Now in quant, as I told you, he was not that strong in number properties. He found the questions a bit more, uh, you know, tougher. So he went through the course. And uh, since he was scoring really well, he did not have to go through the entire course because, as you know, the quant 2.0 course is an adaptive course, right? So he went through the course um, uh, that was suggested to him. And upon doing the course diligently, and, and by that, let me show you something very interesting. So, for example, he was doing the number, uh, even an odd um, module, right? He started off with an 
initial score of 58 percentage in the diagnostic quiz once he did the entire course you can see that he started scoring a hundred percent in the quizzes that he, he was taking uh, after going through the files so this is the improvement that you you know essentially see when you do the course diligently and you patch your gaps up and obviously if you patch your gaps up what would be the result fantastic scores in medium questions as you can see for all the five subsections and specifically for number properties you see that it's, it's one of the top um, two uh, areas where his scores are really so very high. Not only that, hard questions where he initially faltered, his accuracy went on to a 70 percentage. Clearly an indication for a 90th percentile student. And that is what happened in his actual test as well. So if I were to summarize his entire journey for you, uh, you know, from that starting score of 640 with the Q48 and V30, reaching to that 730, um, you know, improving from V32 to V40 and, and that one point increment in quant. Mind you, it might seem very little right now, but uh, that one point is the difference when it when we talk about scores. Um, for example, let's say 710 versus 730. That that's when this one point becomes so very important. But but for Agniva, you know, he only did um, three things. He made sure that he d does the course properly. So and he did the same. He made sure that he uh, you know did stages one, two, and three for all the subsections. He hit the milestones in in the course attempts in the scholarium quizzes, and then he tracked the metrics to make sure that his entire journey is predictable in nature and he does not get any surprises, um, you know, when he's taking the actual test. I hope. This video gives you a very clear understanding on what should you do to reach your target score and um, you follow that part out. I wish you all the best and happy learning and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.